What up makers, Mike Clifford here, and this time I'm industrial maker. I'm really excited to share with you how I made this cool little LED epoxy resin cube. Now this thing has a wireless charging receiver inside of it and is battery powered, so it's totally portable. You can actually charge this with the same charger that you use for your iPhone or Android, but I actually made a custom charging base for it. And to top it off, the controller even has a music sync mode. So without further ado, let's get going and see how it was done. To make this epoxy cube, I'm going to be pouring epoxy resin into a melamine form. The form is simply a box that's going to have a strip of melamine around its inside that's going to create the channel for the LEDs in the epoxy cube. Here I'm cutting this strip for the LED channel with a draft angle on each side, and that draft angle is gonna actually make it easier to remove from the epoxy after we pour. Before cutting the sides of the form, I attached the strip for the LED channels to the piece I'd be cutting the sides from. And this way I only have to cut out the sides at once and the channel will already be there when I put it together. You can almost think of this like making a box from your own homemade crown molding. Except not exactly. To seal the form, I decided to use the same techniques I used with concrete, starting with applying paste wax to the entire form. I covered all the surfaces of the melamine that were exposed particle board with aluminum foil tape, which really nicely grips and conforms to the surface, and the epoxy doesn't stick to it. Since it would be difficult to get a caulk gun inside the small box form, I decided to use silicone caulk on as many of the edges as I, I could before I fully assembled the form. As usual, I used a metal fondant ball tool to clean up the lines. It pushes away the excess caulk, which can then easily be pulled away after it dries because we used the paste wax first. And after caulking as much as I could, I could then finish putting the form together and use hot glue to seal it up. I also decided to use some of this mold release spray on the inside of the form just in case. I'm not sure if it was necessary, but it did come out pretty easily later on. For this project, I used Total Boat 2 to 1 epoxy resin with a medium hardener. And when you mix the two parts of epoxy resin together, there's an exothermic reaction. And if you pour it too deep, it can actually cause all kinds of bad things and start smoking. I know this because it happened to, um, well, a friend one time. So to avoid that, you're gonna pour a lot of thin layers about two hours apart to build up the epoxy in the form. I was able to get away with about half inch per layer in my shop because it was really cold, maybe under 60 degrees. But normally you're gonna stick to probably a quarter inch or so in each layer. Had to step away from this project for a little bit to take a trip and I come back and the epoxy's cured and we still got one layer to go. Um, so that the new epoxy we're gonna pour will bond to the old cured epoxy. We're just gonna take a 80 grit sanding pad and rough that up real good. After pouring the last layer, I used the light touch with a heat gun to remove all the bubbles. And I did that after every pour. After allowing the epoxy to cure for 24 hours, I used a cheap chisel to pry the form off of the epoxy. And when I pulled this out of the form, I was really worried for a second there because the difficulty in getting to the tight spaces with the caulk had resulted in a lot of surface imperfections. But first, I was thinking that I was gonna have to toss this out to start over, but I'm just gonna use a table saw to trim off a little bit of the edges, then use a lot of sanding and elbow grease and polishing, and I think we might be able to save it that way. I set my table saw up to just take a thin slice off the cube. After running one half of each side through the saw, I would flip the cube over and run the other half of the same side through. When I was doing the thicker part of a side, I also found it was better to go in small passes so I could push it through faster and avoid the blade heating up the epoxy and softening it. After this process and a little bit of sanding, I could see that the cube was looking good and going to polish up nicely, so it was time to move on to making the cutouts for the electronics and wiring. I first used a Forstner bit to start clearing out some material from the base of the cube. 
So what I've constructed here is just a little jig that will allow me to run the cube and a little square through the router and route out the square on the bottom of the cube. Makes it pretty easy, repeatable, should get a nice little cut out on the bottom. While I'm routing that out, let me take a minute and tell you about my experience with this video's sponsor, FilterBuy. So when FilterBuy approached me about working together, my first thought was that I don't just don't know. I don't know if this community is that interested in air filters. But then I thought, how long has it been since I changed my air filter? And it had been like six or seven months. I pulled this thing out and I mean, look at that. It's just disgusting. I, I can't believe that I was actually breathing that. And what FilterBuy does is send you a new set of filters every three months so you never have to think about it. You just get them in the mail and then change them and you're done. And so I'm a total buyer on this concept. I bet if a lot of you went out there, checked your air filters now, you would find yourself in the same situation as me. So if that's you, head down to that link in the description below and check out FilterBuy. They're an American owned company, family run, so you can definitely feel good supporting them and supporting them also supports this channel and they're a huge supporter of the maker community. So all in all, it's a win-win situation. Go check them out now. Back to the build. I then used a small Forstner bit to drill a hole from the cavity down towards the LED channel and to drill another hole perpendicular to it from the LED channel in so that I can run wires from the cavity to the LED channel. I threaded two sections of individually addressable LED strips through the holes that I just drilled. After trimming those strips to length to wrap all the way around the cube, I used hot glue to fill up the hole where the wires went through to the cavity so that epoxy wouldn't get through when I poured it. I also used super glue to reinforce the adhesive backing on the LED strips when attaching them to the cube. I used aluminum foil tape to seal off the LED channel so I could fill them with some white epoxy that would diffuse the LED light. I want to mention quickly here that I did make a second cube lamp that I'm going to show and talk about later in the video where I put the LEDs behind the epoxy instead of in it so that they could be replaceable. Back to this cube, I mixed up some more of the Total Boat 2 to 1, added some white pigment, and then poured it over the LEDs. When I removed the aluminum tape, I realized something that probably should have been obvious to me from the get-go, and that's that the sticky side of the tape doesn't come off of the epoxy as easy as the aluminum side. So I had to use my cheap sacrificial chisel and some sandpaper to get all the bits of the tape out of the epoxy. And then I wanted to test the LEDs, and to my relief, they still worked. The aluminum foil caved into the channels a bit and left the concave shape in the epoxy, but not a big deal. I just went back with a thin layer of white epoxy to top them off so they could then be sanded flush with the rest of the cube. I put the epoxy cube aside for a bit to work on making the wireless charging base for it. I just made this out of some quarter inch maple craft lumber. I used my router to make a cutout in the shape of the wireless charging pad. Now while this wireless charging board might look a little complex, it's actually identical to all the chargers that are being sold out there. It's just the plastic is removed. You can even plug the micro USB right into it. This basic board is better for making your own charger because all that plastic housing is going to do is block the wireless signal and make it weaker. I then used some five minute epoxy to attach the wireless charging pad and its micro USB jack to the piece of wood. Now this piece is actually gonna be the top half of the base and the bottom half is gonna be formed from identical piece which I'm gonna wrap in a decorative frame so that it will hold the cube in place when you put it down. I used some small machine screws to screw the top piece with the charging pad to the bottom piece in the pad so that you could replace the charging pad if you ever needed to. Now back to the cube, it was time to get to sanding to make this thing gleam like a Steinway & Sons piano. I started on the disc sander to remove the bulk of the excess white epoxy, then moved over and used my rotary sander in non-orbital mode with a hard sanding pad so the edges would be sanded straight. Before the final polishing, I cut out a square of black translucent acrylic, which will be the bottom of the cube. I then used my router to very carefully make a cutout in the acrylic for the wireless charging receiver, which is going to bring power into the LED cube. 
I also use my rotary tool to cut a little groove in the acrylic that will hold a charging protection circuit in place. And this little chip is really the heart of everything. It's gonna take the power from the wireless receiver and distribute it to the battery and charge it and power the LEDs. And you'll see more how that's set up in a second here. I clamped the acrylic base to the bottom of the epoxy cube and drilled pilot holes for the machine screws that would hold them together. I also used a countersink bit because I wanted to make sure that the cube would sit flush against the charger and get the best signal possible. The last step before the electronics is using this three-step plastic polish which really makes epoxy gleam. You can apply it with a lint-free cloth or with any buffing tool. So while I'm applying that, I just want to take a second and invite anyone who's new here to join this community by clicking the subscribe and bell button. We have a lot of fun creating and designing all kinds of cool things, so I think you'll like it here. Last thing to do is electronics, and I kept it really simple, just used off-the-shelf parts you can get from Amazon. Links will be in the description below if you want to make something like this yourself. The whole thing is going to be powered by this little LiPo battery, and then we've got this little charging protection circuit. So what this charging protection board does is prevents this battery from being overcharged. The protection board is also gonna to connect to the wireless power receiver, which is gonna then pass the power to the battery. Now we've soldered a pigtail connector to the wireless charging protection board as well on its output. And that's just gonna to go to this little SP106E LED controller. And this is a pretty cool little controller, does some music syncing, different color modes, has a little RF remote, Pretty cool, I'm a fan of it. And then that's gonna have its connectors that come with it. You just connect those to the LEDs in the cube and you're good to go. We're gonna get to the beauty shots in a second, but I wanna talk for a minute first because the last LED epoxy light I did, it got a lot of love, but a lot of people we're up in arms about some things that, you know, I didn't necessarily think were the biggest deal since it was experiment, but you know, can't make everyone happy. This time I actually went back and I made a second cube. I want to go through how I made this second cube and show you some of the differences and it'll address some of the issues I think that people are going to have. So first thing, heat. So in the last light, I used 12 volt LEDs and those get a lot hotter than the five volt LEDs that I used here. I've ran this thing for hours and it just doesn't get that hot at all. So I'm really not that worried about heat. So first thing that I did differently was to make a foam insert and pour over that so that the cube would come out of the form hollow. And this is just a foamular foam. You can get it at any big box store unless you live in California. And then I think it might be a little tricky. So now the issue of replaceable LEDs. The easiest way is to just make the white epoxy diffuser extend all the way through to the inner wall so that you can just put the LED strip inside of the cavity, replace it if you want. Now, because what I decided to do is after popping it out of the form, cut opposing sides of it, two of them, on the table saw, and you could use a router too, but I wanted to show that you could do this with the table saw if you don't have a router table and then pour the epoxy on either side there. Let that cure, then flipped it over, cut the other two sides, then poured those sides. So now the question is, if I were to do it again, would I do replaceable or non-replaceable? To be honest, for this project, I would do the non-replaceable one again, and here's why. When you pour the epoxy layer through and you want the epoxy to go all the way around, the white epoxy diffuser is now a structural part of this cube. And because of that, it's got to be pretty thick. And because it's thick, it's actually going to block a lot of light. And this one is way, way less bright than this one is. It's a trade-off, brightness versus replaceability. And at the end of the day, I go for brightness because I've had a lot of experience with these NeoPixels over the last three years. These LEDs last a long time. Even the cheap Chinese ones, I've honestly never had a strip go bad in the last three years or so that I've been using these. This last five, six years, that's good by me. So up to you, totally personal preference, but I would do non-replaceable if I did it again. All right, so that's the end of my rant. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed this project. I hope I answered a few of the questions, get a little more love and a little less hate on this one. And speaking of love, if you like this video, 
make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you can find out about future videos. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time. Bye.